Good evening, everybody. So, one thing that's always fascinated me, and when I'm listening to Sasquatch Chronicles, or reading encounters, or talking to people personally, is how Sasquatch and Bigfoot, in the different varieties and different climates, deal with snow in winter. Now, obviously, like we said, there are different species of them. What we've determined to be different species or subspecies. Some seem to be right at home in the snow, some seem to be completely carnivorous, some seem to be more chimpanzee-like and live in desert areas or live in subtropical areas. We're mainly talking about the United States and Canada, but you could apply this to, you know, Europe or Eurasia or Asia proper. And here in Southern California, our local mountains, Big Bear, Idlewild area, Arrowhead, even parts of the Southern Sierras, they have long, warm summers, you know, fairly wet springs, but they get snow. It gets cold. You know, you'd have a temperature spring from August from 85, 90, 95 down to the 20s at night. And to have one creature stay in one area and being able to adapt to all that, there's plenty that do it. I mean, deer do it, birds do it, squirrels do it. But when you think about Bigfoot, being very similar to us, maybe being an offshoot of humans, we would freeze to death if it wasn't for clothing. We would freeze to death um, very, very easily. So we physically can't do it, so we adapt ourselves with clothing. Sasquatch doesn't have that. Now, obviously, Bigfoot being covered in hair, always described as being hairy, that offers some level of insulation. And I think it's quite obvious that that does protect them. Also, they are big hulking beasts. They probably burn a lot of calories in order to stay warm. And um, I'm sure they hide in caves or hollowed out trees or have some kind of a den. Uh, but you never hear any reports of them wearing clothes. I've heard reports of them in the more northern climates, maybe different subspecies who are more adapted to it, walking right through water in the snowstorm. Like a half frozen creek, freezing cold, something that would kill a human in a minute, you know, less than a minute. You walk through there with your wet clothes on and collapse on the other side of the bank, you'd be dead. You'd be dead like almost within a couple minutes of hypothermia. And it doesn't even seem to bother these creatures. Now, I do think like in California and the Sierras and probably much across the Rockies, as deer species and herds move to lower elevations, I'm sure that they follow them. Places where I spend a lot of time in the Sierras, I know certain times of year we have no Sasquatch activity, and other times of year we have a lot of knocks, a lot of hoots, strange tracks, um, tree breaks, stuff that would be associated with Bigfoot. And I do think definitely that they migrate. I do think there are some subspecies that stay in the winter year-round. And it kind of only makes sense. Like here in Idlewild, this is at Lake Fulmore, and... You know, it's about 5,000 feet. There's a half foot of snow on the ground. It was in the low 30s when I went up there. As being a flatlander, someone used to the sun all the time, I was cold. So I think they'd probably move down the hill, three or 4,000 feet, where it's probably still plenty cold. But they can get to the deer species, um, get to unfrozen water sources. They're going to follow the prey. And I think if I was going to stick it out here in the winter, you'd have to be adapted to grow a really thick coat. You'd have to have a really good layer of fat. You'd have to have a really good calorie source. Now, there's still lots of tourists this time of year, so digging in trash cans and campgrounds and stuff like that is an option, although that's not nearly as many people out as there would be in the summertime. So I think in a lot of more temperate areas, I think migration is one of the ways that they deal with it. Um, but I think in areas where it's snow all the time, like if you're in Montana or Idaho, northern Idaho, or a place where, you know, six, seven, eight months out of the year, there's snow on the ground, uh, you know, where you basically have like the end of May till the early October is the only nice part of the year. Uh, and also, I'm sure they know how to find squirrel stashes of nuts. Maybe they stash some of their own stuff. Um, but I think a lot like maybe Native Americans or people do, they'd have a summer camp, a winter camp, places that they stop along the way. And uh, I think it's really quite fascinating because I've heard people... You know, in the Idlewild area, though, have seen them in the snow, have encountered big tracks. It's been, you know, 20 degrees and snowing outside, freezing cold at night, and something was looking in their window. 
something was knocking outside, something was looking around, and the cold really not seeming to bother him. You could almost argue that maybe there's a supernatural characteristic that keeps these creatures, I won't say warm, but maybe their physiology is just so fundamentally different, or there's some kind of a driving inner force in them that keeps them to where weather just doesn't bother them. You know, they're, I, we've talked at length on this channel about her, how their digestive system, you know, eating trash, garbage, rotted meat, you know, drinking water out of ponds and lakes, stuff that would do any human, even give a dog diarrhea, that they'd have to have a really robust um, digestive tract. So everything about these things is big, strong, powerful. So maybe they just have a way of powering their way through it migrating maybe they have dens that they go to maybe they have caves or hollowed out lakes or you know embankments that they hollow out and shove a bunch of pine needles because rotting pine needles and foliage can provide some warmth uh yeah i don't know maybe once you guys let me know what you think in the comment section about how these guys get through winter i think it's a combination of migration i think it's a combination of finding a sufficient calorie source. I think there might also be something supernatural that keeps these creatures going in the snow as well, um, or some kind of unexplained physiology. I also think that humans and our calorie sources and heat sources, maybe they approach buildings at night because they're warmer. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure, but when I hear stories about being 15, 20 degrees, nighttime, blizzard, and these creatures are wading through a fast running stream that's just absolutely ice cold and walking through it without a problem or these things running around barefoot in the snow or hiking up hillsides now when you talk about the Himalayas and you have like the Yetis and different variations of these creatures of the Almas in Russia that deal with snow primarily where you could say most of their lives is spent in the snow and they probably have a few short months of it actually being warm. Uh, it's quite fascinating to think how they get by it and how they do it. Because you think we always use bears as, 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 an, as an analogous species, as a large, carnivorous, omnivorous creature. But they hibernate. So let me know what you guys think in the comment. Sasquatch, wintertime, and snow has always been a big question to me. Stay safe out there, folks.